Welcome back everybody. This week we're talking about penis envy, vagina envy, what these concepts really mean and how we can understand them so men and women can finally come together and have a great relationship with each other. Penis envy, vagina envy, crucial topics to understand and it's too bad because they are often misunderstood. That we put a lot, of, a lot of our cultural bias, we put a lot of projection on onto what, as, as particularly that the term penis envy means, which was the one term coined by Freud. He didn't coin vagina envy, but he did talk about it indirectly. He called it castration anxiety. But Freud in no way meant, and he comes out and says this explicitly, he in no way implies that a woman is truly envious of a literal penis. All it means is that she recognizes that her life would be easier in some respects if she was a man, if she had more masculine qualities. It begins in childhood. A young girl will look down and realize she doesn't have the same thing down there that a young boy has. This is around six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's when it begins. Some insecurities can uh, uh, can happen because of that, according to Freud. I'm not sure if that's true, but he said the same thing about boys castration anxiety we're going to get to in the second half of this video but if a, wom a woman doesn't come to terms with having a not a literal vagina right but a metaphoric vagina then these insecurities are going to play out later in life because she hasn't accepted herself as a woman so one way it could play out it would be would be second wave feminism this is the the brand of feminism think hillary clinton in her kim jong-un pantsuit not not difference from men in any way, and maybe not even a sexual being in any way. I mean, what is this? This is a distancing from your sexual nature. Now, later, third wave feminism, feminism came on and, and made that sex positive. We're not different from men in any way, and we're sex positive. The second wave feminism, great example. A lot of this starts with Karen Horney, don't call her horny, who, who did coin the term vagina envy. But I don't think she understood what Freud meant at all. Again, Freud did not mean that women want a literal penis. Just like vagina envy doesn't mean that men want a literal vagina. Who we'll gets the vagina envy? Uh, aggressiveness in women. This is another example of penis envy. But exactly, right? Women think I need to be more of a man. Life would be easier if I was a man. So they start taking on masculine, particularly high testosterone attributes. But that's only one way to get your needs met, and it may not be the best way unless you have relatively high testosterone. It's going to make you uncomfortable. It's, it's, you're, it's, you're not going to be as good at it. So it really hinders the, the way that women can inter interact in the world. A, a third, a third way feminism trope that, that women say, which is, oh, guys, it's so easy to be a guy. This is another indication of uh, penis envy, in fact, a quite literal one. I mean, they're exactly saying what penis envy is, projecting out this scenario where it's easier to be a man. The thing is, it's not totally wrong, that projection. I mean, some of it may be true. In some instances, it's definitely easier to be a man, but in other instances, it's either easier to be a woman. We're getting to it. And the final instance of penis envy is competing with other women. A lot of men, they get their particularly sexual fitness from competing with other men winning maybe but at least getting along with other men creating um yeah like healthy win-win and -win interactions with other men particularly of higher status men but this is not a female's primary fitness indicator not primary it can be a good secondary one but their primary one is youth and beauty the unfortunate thing about youth and beauty though is they are fleeting so a woman will distract herself from the insecurity around that the natural insecurity around that and compete with other women and pretend like that is a fitness indicator for her. It is not, and as we all know, women who call other women sluts and hoes and, oh, I can't believe she's wearing all that makeup, probably the most unattractive thing ever. But there's an inverse to penis envy that almost nobody talks about when they criticize penis envy, and that is vagina envy. I learned it in grad school as womb envy. And this is, again, the inverse of penis envy. A woman projects out this scenario where it's easier to be in this, uh, uh, to, to interact in this world as a man effectively by taking on masculine traits and men do the same thing. They project out a scenario where it's easier to be a woman and they're not totally wrong. In some instances, it is easier to be a woman, but in some instances, 
It's not. Just some uh, examples of this. Just the, the need to be understood. That's a very feminine quality. Uh, women are much better at associations. They get rewarded by associations like men get awarded, rewarded by achievement. Much more important to be understood by the social group. Not so important for men. For men, it's much more important to understand, to create a healthy relationship with reality. Oh, yeah, so... While a young girl may look down, see what she has down there and be afraid, be afraid of how it could make her vulnerable, a young boy can look down and perhaps one of his initial reactions to having a penis would be, well, I I have a lot of responsibility for this. Now, I don't think that uh, Freud was correct. Well, I'll leave it up to you. Maybe he was correct in saying, now, is that a young girl's or a young boy's first impression when they look down and see what they have and notice that there's an opposite sex out there and they have something totally different? It doesn't matter, though. But what does matter is how that it, that it is interpreted in the metaphoric sense, how this plays out in the young girl's and young boy's life. So a young boy looks down and sees responsibility. And so... Yeah, so a lot of vagina envy will be trying to eschew this responsibility by trying to be understood instead of understanding, by wanting to be told what to do. That's another way that uh, men have vagina envy. You need to be told what to do. You are not self-directed in any way. A lot of gossip, a lot of seeking external validation from your social group. This is vagina envy. Putting down, turning away from the responsibility of being a man. Foppishness is another instance of this. Uh, you know, always dressing, you know, having a, like dressing exactly well, ex- exactly how you know, going overboard on dressing. Foppishness. Not, of course, it's good to dress well, but if you pay too much attention to it, uh, to the um, detriment of your more important responsibilities, then vagina envy, and with that paying way too much attention to your health, to how you look. If you have a six pack and you're trying to get an eight pack because you think people will like you better instead of actually going out and achieving something in the world, then I would say that is a sign of vagina envy. But what's the cause of both of these? The cause of both of these is the same. Trying to cover up for your perceived weakness with strengths that you don't have. The weaknesses, the potential weaknesses of both men and women is potentially scary, and you try to turn away from those by taking on attributes of somebody that you're not, of of the opposite sex. So it does indicate a crucial difference between men and women that I think all men and women need to understand, which is vulnerability versus responsibility. Women are much more vulnerable. Men have more responsibility. And that's just the fact of who we are. Go check out my video on the Oedipus Complex uh, for, for further extrapolation on that. And so with vulnerability, women are more scared. It's scarier to be a woman. And with responsibility, that's more difficult. It's more difficult to be a man. One isn't better. One isn't inherently better. One is inherently worse. But they are different. We do have different challenges. And this indicates how we eventually overcome our penis envy or our vagina envy. And that is, of course, to create a secure attachment with the opposite sex. All these masculine traits that a woman is trying to to to, to partake in herself, to execute herself. It doesn't really work. It can only work in the short term. It makes her miserable. Witness the present day of the single millennial urban dwelling woman uh, for, all, for all instances of misery. But what happens? She finds a guy. She creates a secure attachment with the guy. And she realizes, wait a minute, all this time I was trying to be aggressive. What I needed to do was create a secure attachment with a guy who is naturally because he has 40 times the testosterone I have he's naturally going to be more aggressive than I am I'll let him do it we'll combine our boundaries he takes on those roles likewise with a with a man you know I I was trying to dress really well and get myself looking really good what I really needed was to have a woman in my life who I created a secure attachment with. She dresses well, she makes herself look good, and I appreciate that in her. Or I was running around trying to get understood, I'm trying to be understood by everybody, uh, whether it's my boss or my male friend group or whoever else. I just wanted to be understood, but that 
was going nowhere. What I needed to do was to create a secure attachment with somebody who is naturally more empathetic because she has 40 times less testosterone than I have, and then she understands me. So a lot of the ways that we overcome penis envy and vagina envy, it is in the creation of a secure attachment, and not just penis and vagina envy, but I would submit all envy. And we'll leave it there. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. And always remember that when it comes to overcoming your penis envy, your vagina envy, it can only happen when you actually go out in the world and seek it in your opposite.